This is your PowerPoint for the PowerPoint quiz on the American Revolution, the problems of the French and Indian War. The British had defeated the French during the French and Indian War and had control of the North American continent, but they also had an outstanding war debt. The Indians no longer could use one empire against the other, causing more instability in the tribes in the Ohio River Valley region. The Indians formed a covenant to resist the English. In response to this, the English government established a proclamation of 1763. This was a line that was meant to stop American colonists from expanding into the Indian lands in the Ohio River Valley. For Americans, they felt that this was trading with the enemy and that basically this had created a disloyalty of the English Empire towards the American colonists. Another problem with the American colonists is that they had been trading with the enemy empires in the black market. This especially included France and Spain. Grenville's policies. Prime Minister George Grenville instituted a new series of taxes to solve the war debt problems. He discovered that Americans paid about 2,000 pounds in taxes, but cost 7,000 to actually collect. So he passed the following acts. The Currency Act, which was a tax on paper money to stop Americans from printing substitute money to the English pound. The Sugar Act, which lowered the tax on French imports of sugar and molasses, but switched trials of black market smugglers to Britain. And the Stamp Act, in which the government stamped papers on certain goods. The Stamp Act. Probably the most difficult of all these acts was the Stamp Act. American colonists were angered most by this particular policy. It provided for a direct tax on paper goods, and this bypassed the authority of local legislatures. This did not affect the rich or the poor because the tax was on legal wills, dice, and cards. But the middle class was most impacted and the most enraged. Samuel Adams led the Sons of Liberty in protest marches in Boston. Riots then occurred in Massachusetts, burning down the homes of people like the merchant Thomas Hutchinson. The American Complaints The Americans' main complaint was that they had a lack of representation on the issue of voting. They also claimed overtaxation. James Otis argued that tyranny was due to a lack of representation in the House of Commons. The merchants in Boston wanted to trade with other empires in the world market in order to seek out better prices on goods due to competition. The British replies. The British claimed that English citizens paid two-thirds more in taxes than Americans even after the new taxes had been put into place. Also, they claimed on the issue of representation that the English Empire worked off of something called virtual representation, in which all citizens were represented by those who were in office. The British officials made decisions for the common good, otherwise the entire empire would suffer, including those in Parliament. American representation in the English Parliament also would only marginalize them as a small group, and they would never gain real power. In other words, even if the Americans had had been given representation, it would only end up being a disadvantage to them since there would be so few Americans who were actually doing representation in the English Parliament. The Resolution of the Stamp Act Crisis The Boston merchants formed a non-importation group. They stopped buying British goods, and this had a negative effect on British profits. So the British decided to relent and get rid of the Stamp Act. But they faced a real problem. If they gave in to all the riots that were taking place, this would hurt British authority. So they passed the Declaratory Act. This act stated that the Stamp Act would be removed, but only because the British authority had made that decision not due to colonial protests. Eventually, though, Prime Minister George Grenville lost confidence, and he was replaced by Lord Rockingham. Charles Townsend. William Pitt eventually replaced Lord Rockingham, but was too ill, so he was then replaced by Charles Townsend. Prime Minister Townsend tried to raise funds by increasing import taxes. He moved the British troops from the western frontier to the east coast. And he established the Quartering Act, which required colonists to provide funds to house British soldiers on the coast. The purpose was to stop the protests that were taking place and try to create order. Boston Radicals The Sons of Liberty were the main place of protest and radical ideas of independence. In fact, one of the myths about the American Revolution is that at the beginning, most Americans were in favor of complete independence. In fact, we know from Sam Adams' own writings that only about one-third of the Americans favored independence at the beginning. 
The other third of Americans were loyalists, and there was a last third of Americans who sat on the fence between the desire to have complete independence and the desire to try and provide some type of reform to the British monarchy. Eventually, two-thirds of the Americans would be in favor of independence, but this wouldn't happen until deep into the American Revolution. Women in Boston formed the Daughters of Liberty. They formed small societies that became self-reliant and would not import British goods. And the Massachusetts legislature called for a boycott of all British goods. The Boston Massacre. Colonists in Boston on one day threw snowballs with rocks in them at soldiers in Boston. They were angered over the Quartering Act. The British soldiers were ordered not to fire, but one did. This led to the killing of six people, including Crispus Attucks, the first African American killed during the Revolution. John Adams defended the soldiers in a local American court and showed that they were innocent of abuse because they were simply doing their duty. What's ironic about this, of course, is that John Adams eventually became one of the radical revolutionary leaders. But I think what's important here to note is that John Adams started as more of a reformist. He believed that the Americans could remain within the English Empire, but he wanted to have some type of reform about the overall representation system. John Adams would change his mind during the Declaration of Independence and during the Continental Congress that passed that. At that point, John Adams became a radical and defended the idea of complete independence from the British Empire. Notice that this was the way most Americans uh, evolved during the American Revolution. Effects of the Massacre The British removed Townsend from his position for a lack of confidence. Colonial leaders used the incident to spread propaganda of a massive massacre, and fear began to grow amongst the higher class that merchants of the lower class were radicalized in the cities. The Final Straws Charles Townsend, during his time as Prime Minister, passed a series of acts trying to raise revenues in order to pay off the debt from the French and Indian War. For example, he passed the Tea Act, in which the British gave the East India Tea Company a monopoly on tea as long as they kept prices down. The idea behind this was that the British would provide what was known as an external tax, in which they would not tax the colonists directly, so the colonists then would not get upset, but rather they would give a monopoly to the East India Tea Company and then provide a tax on the East India Tea Company in order to try to raise revenues in order to pay off the debt. Americans, though, saw this as an intrusion on economic freedom, so they formed the Boston Tea Party, which was eventually punished by the British with the intolerable or coercive acts that closed down local legislatures and forced Boston to pay for the entire damage of the Tea Party. Quartering Act II was then passed, in which the colonists had to house British soldiers in their private homes. The point of this was to try to seek out the radicals who had done the Boston Tea Party and who were supposedly leading to all the uprisings that were taking place in Boston. The Boston Port Act closed down the Boston Port until all damages were paid for. The Justice Act allowed British soldiers to be tried in Britain, not in America. And the Quebec Act protected Canadian Catholicism and expanded Canadian territory into the Ohio River Valley. The purpose of this was to try to create peace with the previous French enemies during the French and Indian War. But the American colonists saw this again as a trading against them after they had fought in the French and Indian War on the side of the British. Internal Disagreement Joseph Galloway represented the idea that the Americans should work with the British in order to advise and eventually create a reform. John Adams initially, like I said before, wanted to compromise, but then came to an opinion on complete independence. But probably one of the fiercest and most successful advocates of independence was Thomas Paine, who wrote in Common Sense. He argued that the American colonies were like children who had grown into adults. They could no longer wait and be ruled by some king who lived 10,000 miles away. They needed a local republic with a representative democracy, just like children who had grown into adults who wanted to be free and to lead their own lives based upon liberty. The Declaration of Independence King George ordered the arrest of Sam Adams and John Hancock. This led to an engagement at Lexington and Concord. After the Americans scattered the sign of British troops, they then fought a guerrilla warfare-style attack on troops marching back to Boston. The English Parliament looked for a compromise of direct local taxation with English parliamentary supremacy. 
The king denied this, and this led to the creation of the Declaration of Independence and the eventual belief that America should be completely independent from Britain, not just attempt to do reforms. American Diversity Like we talked about before, a third of the American population favored the rebellion. A third of Americans were loyalists. They believed in the balance of aristocracy, monarchy, and commoners. They believed England would provide the best marketplace in the world. Black people were divided on the issue of the American Revolution. Some ran to fight for Britain because Britain promised to give them freedom from slavery. Others fought for the Americans because George Washington eventually promised freedom from slavery for blacks who did fight on the side of America in order to compete with the British Proclamation of Freedom. Indians remained neutral, but then joined the British for fear of American expansion into the Ohio River Valley. The British Strategy During the Revolution The British decided a four-point strategy on defeating the Americans. Number one was to overwhelm the Americans with superior force and isolate the radicals from civilians. Remember, at this time, the British had the strongest army and navy in the world. Plus, most American radicals who favored complete independence were isolated in Massachusetts and really Boston already. The British believed that they could completely isolate these radicals. They would cut off the head of the revolution. Number two, isolate the Americans with superior British naval blockade. Remember again, because the British had the strongest navy in the world, if they could blockade off the East Coast line, at that point, Americans would not be able to get the resources that they needed. Number three, keep foreign influence from providing Americans with support. Probably the worst fear of the British, like most countries, would be that a foreign power like France would see an opportunity to support the Americans and divide the British and the Americans and make sure that the Americans had the support they needed to win. And number four, connect with local loyalists in order to support a drive that would wedge between the Americans. The idea here was to try to take the loyalist faction, that one-third we talked about, and use them as a way to drive a wedge between the Americans who completely supported the war and those who were sitting on the fence. The first two years. The Americans almost won at the Battle of Bunker Hill, but ran out of ammunition. The British lost the support of the local people by abusing the populace with soldiers. This was a huge mistake for the British. The British soldiers who came to America tended to look at the American colonists as sort of the scum of the empire and treated them as such. Because of this, this undermined the strategy that they had of cutting off all of those radicals from the rest of the population, and it also undermined the ability to isolate the radicals um, from the rest of the population by supporting loyalists. The Battle of Saratoga really ended up turning the war. At this battle, General John Burgoyne wanted to cut off New England from the rest of the colonies. He traveled, but he traveled with too much baggage, including his mistress. He did not inform the other generals of their role. This lack of working together with the other generals eventually allowed the Americans to win this battle, and that sent a signal to the French that they could win the war. The Southern Campaign Lord Cornwallis and the colonists fought a guerrilla-style warfare in the South. Initially, the Indians joined with the British, but Nathaniel Green was able to win over the Loyalists and the Indians in the region. The French entered the war at this point, and they were able to surround Cornwallis at Yorktown in Virginia. This eventually led to the Treaty of Paris in 1783. The American leaders, including Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and John Jay, attended this treaty. They pushed for British recognition of American independence. The Americans also wanted access to the Newfoundland fisheries, 